Well, Nick Collier here again, and it's story time. Uh, this one goes back to, I don't know, what am I, about 20, 20 years old, maybe 21, uh, in the town of Hayward, which is uh, on the east uh, bay, uh, across the bay from San Francisco, south a little bit. Actually, directly across the bay from Silicon Valley. Of course, back then it wasn't Silicon Valley. This is 1968, 69, somewhere in there, maybe 70. Uh, I had a Harley shop, uh, custom, custom built Harleys. Uh, ended up uh, in this little back, uh, back shed. Uh, um, you know, we buy old cop bikes, bring them into the shed strip them completely down, build them back into custom um, choppers. And oftentimes these cop bikes had, uh, you know, worn out engines. So we'd have to take the engine apart. I, I say we, really it was just me. Uh, so I'd take the engines apart and, uh, and uh, you know, figure out what was wrong, get some new pistons and new rings and, you know, rebuild the engine. Uh, and oftentimes I would take the cylinders because I didn't have the equipment at the time. I would take the cylinders over to this machinist about a half a mile away uh, on Jackson Street. Now, in this place, I'm, and you know, uh, and also I take in customers' uh, projects. Uh, so, you know, probably about, oh, a couple of times a month. I would show up at this guy's place. And I learned after a while to show up right around five o'clock because that was beer o'clock for him. And so, uh, and uh, he, you know, he was an old codger, kind of like I am right now. <laughs> and uh, you know, he had this machine shop, but uh, he was, I don't know, he was a hoarder, I'd say, because his little half acre piece of property was stacked to the fence line with stuff. Old water pipes, washing machines, refrigerators, uh, you know, uh, old dead tools that, uh, that were rusty and hanging around. Uh, you know, he had uh, stacks of lumber and just you know piles of uh of electrical equipment uh and, and in the back side of all of this and then I mean, literally there was this narrow path that went to the barn and you could just barely get a, a car to drive in there mainly because he had to keep it clear enough to be able to back a truck in and unload whatever it is that he unloaded and uh, and load it back so the place was a disaster. And you'd go inside of the shop, and it was a barn, you know, probably about the size of my shop. Um, and, you know, he had all these machine tools laying around, but, you know, literally, the machine tools would be buried in old uh, empty boxes and, and pieces of metal, sitting across the lathe and, and you know, pieces of metal stacked up against the walls. Oh, well, kind of like my shop. <laughs> oh, by the way, we're in my house because uh, I wasn't feeling all that great today. So I'm kind of taking a day off watching some movies and making a movie. Uh, so, uh, you know, and his shop was like the outside. You'd walk in there and there would be literally just be these aisles that went to, uh, to the machines. And, uh, you know, I'd bring in the cases and, and, uh, and if I showed up at five o'clock uh, and I brought a six pack of beer, we'd sit out front and hang out for a little bit and uh, drink a beer or two and just kind of shoot the shit, as they say. And uh, this one particular time, um, we got to talking motorcycles, you know, because he was a machinist. 
He did all kinds of things, but basically what he did for me was the machine cylinders. Uh, and so we got to talking motorcycles, and, and he was like, yeah, he was talking about old bikes that he had, and old bikes that had come into his shop, and that. And, so, and he said, you know, I, I think I got this old Indian back behind the, the, uh, the lathe. And I, I went, well, really? Oh, well, that's interesting. I'm, you know, I, I'd been to that lathe many times, and there was nothing there but a mound of uh, old dead boxes and, and pieces of metal and metal shavings, you know, piled up to the ceiling. Uh, he said, yeah, yeah, I think so. And, you know, we're drinking a beer and, and, uh, and, and kind of relaxed. And he says... Yeah, let's go dig it out and see what it looks like. So I thought, well, hey, why not? Uh, you know, I'm always interested in old bikes. He says, I, he says it's been back there for 25 years. I, I haven't even seen it for 25 years. And I'm thinking, well, this is pretty exciting. And so we go back into, the, in, into his shop and we start pulling these old dead boxes. And I mean, literally, it was... You know, you could, it, it, like, a, like a geological uh, formation, you, you dig down a bit and you get something from five years ago and dig down a little bit further and you get something from ten years ago. And, you know, you, we just kept going down. And all of a sudden, there, there was a motorcycle, sure enough. And we pull the boxes off them. We pull the old metal shavings off and the metal pipes and all of that and, and kind of get it cleared out. And it's an old uh, 1925 Indian four-cylinder inline. Classic. I'm not sure if it was 25, but, you know, somewhere back, way back there. Big, wide handlebars. Uh, and, and, it, and it was beautiful. I mean, it was, you know, it had been sitting a long time. The leather seat was completely rotted away. Uh, he said, well, hey, let's pull it outside and see if it'll start. I'm thinking, <laughs> it's been sitting there for 25 years. And who knows how long it had been sitting in some other place for however many years. But, okay, sure. So we clear a space and we'll kind of drag it out and we get it out front where we usually just sit and have some beers and we're drinking beers all the whole time by the way and uh we get uh, we get it out there and he you know and it's this beautiful inline four cylinder in the indian and i was just like wow it's just exquisite i mean you know it's all beat up and the paint's all wiped out and rust is everywhere and but it's there it's complete and he says well okay let's uh let's put a little gas in and see what guys he checks it he checks the oil and checks a couple of things and pour some uh oh, actually we had to siphon some of that old dead gas out pour some fresh gas in and um and he says i'll bet you it'll start on one kick i'm like get out of here you know, we're going to probably be here for a month before this thing starts. And he said, well, I don't know, those old bikes, you know, they just, they just hung in there. Uh, so, pour some new gas in, primes the carburetor, gets everything all set, everything, takes the, the bowl off of the carburetor, cleans it out because, it, you know, it's got old dead gas in there. That's, it, you know, all... Uh, lacquered and it's just hard as a rock cleans it all out cleans out the the uh, carburetor puts it back together we're talking about you know maybe 45 minutes of dinking around here drinking beers and uh so he uh he says i i can't start it because you know i'm too old but why don't you give it a try i think wow he said, okay, advance the spark, which, you know, Harleys were the same way. You had to advance the spark. I advanced the spark, and I'm thinking, I'm going to kick the shit out of this thing. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen. But, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, give it a try at least. And I set the engine 
you know, you kind of crank the, the Kickstarter until there's pressure on the engine. You've got that one of those cylinders is up and ready to fire. And, uh, and then I jumped up and just gave it all I had because it was four cylinders. You know, that's, that's a heck of a lot of kicking. And that thing started right up. I mean, boom, 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 boom. And they're just sitting there lobbing away. And I'm like, whoa, it was pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, I, he, we never drove it anywhere. I'm sure at some point or another, he pushed it back into that hole and stuff got piled back on top of it. Then some many years later, one of his relatives found it and sold it for a shitload of money. Uh, but uh, that day, that bike ran. This is Nick Collier checking out.